seven years ago, I started an organization, Dirty Girls Ministries. And so calling it Dirty Girls, it got a lot of feedback, both positive and negative. The negative was, I'm not dirty, you know, and, but here's the thing. Those who said that never had this struggle. They never knew what it was like to feel dirty. They never knew what it was like to have this infliction, this condition, this this burden that made them feel dirty, like they didn't have a place at the table. And so I took on that stigma and I said, okay, dirty girls, let's all rally together and let me show you how you can become clean because you are clean in Christ Jesus. You are clean in him. You are whole in him. And so while that might be how you feel on a on a personal level, I feel dirty. On a spiritual level, you are clean. Um, I picked bold because I like to live in my truth and I don't like to pretend to be someone I'm not. Um, so that's why I picked bold. Bold Bella, hey. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being bold and showing us what bold looks like. next decade has greatness for every woman in this room. We must understand that it is people who are very precise and deliberate about the things they do that will be relevant in the next decade we're going into. And it's important that as women, we get rid of the noise that pushes us into the daily grind where we all experience it. I dare say to you that if you're not speaking to yourself, something may be wrong with you. You need to speak to yourself. You need to. You are in control. <laughs> this life is not a dress rehearsal. Yes. Mm. You're living it once. You're going to be. T- you're in your twenties only once. You're in your thirties only once. You don't go back to being thirty. You don't go back to being forty. I'm twenty something, by the way. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For a long time, I was stuck on twenty-three. <laughs> as the age I mean we know the story right Jesus said why will I take the children's bread and give it to the dogs she was like uh uh Jesus uh huh guess what happens when the children's bread falls down the dogs get some hello and she's like she's like okay okay sure make your case so what you think dark, I'm not, you know, whatever it is, my nose is too big, my lips are too big, which is one of the things that used to bother me when I was a teenager. She hired me because she said I looked like her. So, hey, you look like me, so you understand what I'm going through. It's like, that's weird. So, you show up as you are. Of course, you show up as the best version of who you are, right? Yes. But you show up as you are because they are people. The Bible talks about the creation is groaning and waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Are you with me? Okay, so let's start from the beginning where it all started. And I want you to read the book of Genesis. If you haven't read the, read the book of Genesis very well, you cannot understand wealth. Because in the book of Genesis has some immeasurable wisdom concerning wealth. Because Genesis is the beginning of all things. Remember when I talk about history of money. Alright? In the book of Genesis, it said in chapter, verses, chapter 2 that four rivers water the Garden of Eden. Look at the Garden of Eden as the center of commercial activities. As the beginning of civilization. It was not Egypt. No. It was not the Roman Empire. Those ones came later. It was not the British Empire. It was Garden of Eden. In Garden of Eden, there was agriculture. There was gold. There was all sorts of natural resources. And the Bible says four rivers water the Garden of Eden. What are the four rivers that water the Garden of Eden? Pishon. Pishon means increase. Euphrates means being fruitful. Gion and Tigris. Tigris means rapid. And Gion means bursting forth. All of this has to be present in your financial journey to, for it to make sense. Let me tell you something. This precept is not just based on Genesis chapter 2. It is also based on the most important woman in the Bible. Proverbs 31 woman. The ultimate woman guy. And I'll prove it to you. 
coal companies. The Bible says she started with wool and flax. If you understand the process of wool and flax, it is a tedious process. It is a starting point. But she kept at it. She was not discouraged despite whatever she was going through. Then the Bible says she was. She started to do, deal with silk and purple. You know what purple is? Royalty. Silk, exporting and importing. She could only get silk from Egypt at that time. And yet she dealt with silk and purple. So what that says is that she was able to forge some serious diplomatic alliances to be able to get access to the royals in order to what? To clothe and dress them. She kept at her trade. So she was not just clothing the family or the people on the street. She was not clothing royalty. Then the Bible says that she dealt with a merchant ship from afar. Was she a captain of a ship? No. But she dealt with them what? On partnership basis. I need my goods from Egypt. I need to send my goods to Egypt. I need this. I need that. She dealt with them on partnership basis. And then finally, the Bible says what? She considers a field and buy it. Real estate. Wow. 